Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Even by the brutal standards of Saudi Arabia, it was a particularly grisly way to start the new year. 47 executions carried out simultaneously in 12 locations. The kingdom's top cleric called the killings just and a mercy to the prisoners, all convicted of terrorism offences. Among them was Sheikh Nima al Nima, a leading light of Saudi's Shia minority. An Iranian cleric predicted the deaths would stain the collar of the House of Saud and wipe them from the pages of history. Also tonight, as Texas leads American states in relaxing gun laws, the US president plots a last-ditch move to curb them. And a strong start from England's cricketers in the second test in Cape Town. So Saudi Arabia will, according to Iran, pay a high price for the executions of dozens of prisoners, including a leading Shia cleric. Human rights campaigners urge Britain to intervene over the death sentences while neighbouring countries warned the killings would fuel sectarian conflict across the region. Simon Israel reports. Saudi Al Jazeera. The image Saudi and name of each of the executed was broadcast on Saudi TV. There were 47 in total, the biggest mass execution for terrorism for 36 years. But the world's eyes are on image number 46, the prominent Shia cleric a long-time critic of the Sunni-run state, Sheikh Nimra al-Nimra. He had mobilized countless protests against the royal family and had become a popular figure among the oppressed minority. He was shot when arrested back in 2012 for disobeying the ruler. It was seen by human rights groups as part of a Saudi campaign to silence dissent. His execution has been met with widespread condemnation and anger. The country's security forces have been placed on high alert as demonstrators took to the streets in the region where the cleric was from. There have been protests too in neighboring Bahrain. Yesterday, tear gas was used to disperse crowds. Today, they were back on the streets to be greeted with yet more tear gas. All appeals to the Saudi regime for clemency were ignored, but the consequences may not be so easy to brush aside. There have been ominous warnings from other countries in the region. I think Saudi Arabia made a big mistake when it executed al Nimr, as this will fuel the existing sectarian violence in the region more and more. We have already received promises that Saudi Arabia would pardon Sheikh al Nimr and his companions, but unfortunately it didn't honor its promises and instead poured oil on the fire. Iran warned there'd be a high price to pay for the cleric's execution, which some observers believe is all about deterrent, something the Foreign Office dismissed today in a brief statement. There was a small protest outside the Saudi embassy in London, not just about the immediate past, but also the future. For the executed sheikh's nephew is also on Saudi's death row. He was 17 when arrested and the Foreign Secretary told the Commons last year he did not expect him to suffer the same fate as his uncle. Well, I'm now joined from Rygate by the Chair of Parliament's Foreign Affairs Select Committee, Crispin Blunt. He's just returned from a trip to Iran and Saudi Arabia, as it happens. Uh, Crispin Blunt, what did Iran have to say about the Sheikh's case when you were there? Well, it's about a month ago we were there, and uh, on New Year's Eve I received a letter from Dr Bujerdi, who's the chair of the British parliamentary group in the Majlis, uh, asking uh, us to intervene with the Shura and the Saudi authorities uh, on behalf of Sheikh Namir. Now, I wanted to use that as an opportunity to begin a dialogue between the Majlis and the Shura Council. There is a terrible lack of a proper conversation between Iran and Saudi Arabia. And obviously this is execution just means that opportunity has gone and it has ratcheted up the tension hugely between uh, Shia and Sunni in the whole region as well as between Saudi Arabia and Iran and is therefore in policy terms to be hugely regretted as well as of course uh, most of the civilized world is now 
firmly against the death penalty altogether. Indeed, well, and Iran have, have, have been threatening sort of pretty dire consequences for Saudi Arabia as a result of these executions. What is your assessment of what the repercussions will be from Iran? It's very difficult to say. There is a huge opportunity now for Iran if she constructively engages uh, in uh, helping the whole world address this problem of ISIS, which of course means uh, solving the Syrian civil war in the first instance. So uh, Iran and Saudi Arabia have been around the table with the rest of the international community uh, at Vienna as part of the international support group on Syria. And we need Iran to continue to be uh, in a constructive place. Iran is, has a huge interest in positive relations with the rest of the world, uh, following on from the nuclear deal and delivering on the nuclear deal. Uh, and so this is going to be a difficult call for Iran. But in the mm -hmm. end, this is an internal uh, Saudi matter. I mean, as for the British government, um, obviously Sheikh Nimmer's nephew, who's only 17, also faces execution. What should the British government be doing to intervene there? For example, should there be deals that are, are cancelled with the, the Saudi government to try and put pressure? Well, this is a very difficult judgment for British government ministers to make. It, plainly, today has been a hugely retrograde step in terms of diffusing tension in the region. It can only serve to uh, inflame sectarian uh, conflict, and that's something that uh, must be deprecated. Uh, we've got to do what is seen to be effective, and if they execute this uh, young man who was only 17 when he was uh, arrested for the offences that he's alleged to have committed, uh, then that's only going to add fuel to the fire. But again, there is one of the activists today, his family alleged that he was, uh, uh, was not an adult when he committed uh, the offences for which he's been executed today. OK, so the, uh, so so the government... Today's cancel... events don't help. So the government cancelled um, a prisons deal with Saudi uh, under pressure from the opposition, but there's billions of pounds of other trade deals. Should they now be in the balance, do you think? Well, personally, I thought cancelling the prison deal was a disaster. Uh, we were in a position uh, to do a proper audit of the Saudi uh, prison system and give them some really constructive advice about how, how to make their prison service better and more humane uh, and, and more effective. And uh, sadly, we decided uh, to pull out of that, uh, pull out of that contract. Okay. Uh, I think that was a mistake. And, it's, and we've got to judge when it's right to engage, uh, okay. to try and exercise influence, and when to disengage to show our disapproval. Crispin Blunt, thank you very much for joining me.